I bet with Interbet only. They're a fantastic site. I've never had any issues with them. They are very professional. There's never a problem. You deposit money, two seconds later it's in your account. You withdraw, which I do very occasionally. And uh, I believe it's also two seconds it's in your account. Well, it's a place accumulator you want to catch. It'll all begin at 13.05. The splash out 2200, a group three over 2200 meters. It's usually known as the consolation to the main event. And let's go to a rerun before we have a look at that field. Eagle by a length from litigation. Quasi for sure hooks out. Rock pulls right down the middle of the course, the pink cap. Quasi for sure in the meantime makes a huge run on the grandstand side. 200 to go. Winchester Mansion and Quasi for sure. Now Winchester Mansion kicks into overdrive and it's race over. Winchester Mansion unwinds to win. Quasi for sure second. Then came Lord William further back in the running and Cape. Eagle. Well, Hollywood Bets, firmly part of our Gallup TV previews, and they give us the betting updates and horses that have shortened in race number three. Raise a hallelujah. 16 to 1 into 7 to 1. One way traffic, 7 to 2 into 3 to 1. I think let's begin with you, Alistair, because, you know, Candace has got Raise a hallelujah in the race. You know, last time out, it was a very, very clever ride. You know, Atandiwe Mgudla, we know that the horse goes races up handy, that Seamaster, but the way he judged the fractions for his horse to make it to the post, number one, I thought that was a tremendous ride from him. But this horse was possibly one of the better horses finishing off his race. He stayed in KZN after his last run at number seven, Razor, hallelujah. He completely opened the wrong price. Of that, there's no doubt. Um, I thought he was a tad stiff. I thought, I thought Atan Diwem Gudwa won the race on Seamaster, as you, as you say, rather than Seamaster winning the race. Razor, hallelujah's main target is the Gold Cup at the end of July. But with that said, he's blossomed in KZN. He's come alive. His last run shows. If the pace is on and if he's mobile a stroud or two earlier, I'd like to believe that he's the one that they all need to beat. Um, I'll be, Candice will be very disappointed if he's not in the top four. I think all connections and all, um, all those involved with Razor Hallelujah will be surprised if he's not in the top four, what he's showing. So big, big chance. But obviously last year's winner in this race, the sensational winner of this race last year, number four, one-way traffic, has to be respected as well. Strictly on weights, he's got a bit to do to turn it around with Razor Hallelujah. But we all know that one-way traffic was building towards a potential tilt the Hollywood Bets to in July. He fell short. There was no point in Justin Snaith persisting with him getting into the race because he would have needed all sorts of scratchings and everything to go his way. So this was always going to be the safety net going for the consolation yet again. So great respect, respect for number four, one-way traffic. We just saw the run of the Hollywood Bets Dolphins Cup trial where Lord William again shows that he's upwardly mobile, this three-year-old son of William Longsword. He's always going to run an honest race. He's always going to be there and thereabouts. Uh, Christoph Simeon, rise number six, Aragosta, who I'm not sure is at his best around Hollywood Bets Gravel. Good horse, won't run badly, but probably better at a track like Turfentine. So, yep, very interesting dynamics of play. 15, Jimmy Don, with that draw, it's not going to be easy for him. I'm also not convinced Hollywood Bets Gravel is going to be his absolute chop. He's been here before. He ran a good race. He finished just behind Strawberry Bear and Cousin Casey. But... I think as far as PAs are concerned, I think four and seven will actually be enough. I agree. Four and seven will be good enough. Aragosta, Christoph Simeon, keep catches your, catching your eye on this race card, even with 60 and a half. I'll tell you what, the one thing that I want to see in this race is how River Romeo goes against the older horses. If you can, that penalty, yeah. that, if, if, we can, if, we can, if we can watch this horse carefully on the day, just keep an eye on him. Because maybe you, you haven't had a go yet for the Hollywood Bed Stub in July. You, you need a year, no there with your selections. Maybe you like a three-year-old. If you like a three-year-old, see where this horse finishes amongst the older horses here. Yeah. Because, you know, he was just um, you know, <laughs> thrown in the deep end without no life jacket last time out when they raced him in the Daily News and therefore given the penalty, as Alistair mentioned. But we'll see how he fares amongst the older horses here. Yeah. If he runs close up, if he runs there or thereabouts, maybe just out the top four, I think that will be a big statement for the three olds to come in the Hollywood Bet Stub in July. But I'm in agreement with Alistair. Are we including just the two horses in the PA? If you unsure, bracket them with number five, Lord William. Okay. 
I am with four and seven. Alistair, four and seven. If you're looking for one more, maybe number five, Lord William. But we both think that two horses will be good enough for the place accumulator, for one-way traffic, and a horse that's been punted. Number seven, raise a hallelujah. Uh, my name's Danny Deliberto, founder of Ladles of Love. It was founded back in 2014. Communities we, we work with are all over the peninsula and um, we're working with 138 beneficiaries now. We've grown exponentially. Um, we've been able to do that because of all the kindness that we have experienced um, from individuals and corporates such as uh, Interbet who just want to be part of the change.